Subway cash crisis. We're talking about Venezuela once again. To make important banks. They removed the one factory in Georgia. They weren't involved in monetary awareness. All right, welcome to another RTD News segment. Excited to uh, connect real quick and share with you some interesting yet uh, possibly disturbing news about the coming marketing push for CBDCs trying to use the words inclusion as a selling point. So take a listen to this. How do I boil down you know, years of people trying to fix financial inclusion down into one minute? I'm going to try. Hi, my name is James Wallace and this is Crypto in a Minute. Firstly, what does financial inclusion mean? Financial inclusion means that there are people all around the world from the US to Africa to Asia all over that do not get access to financial services like other people. And the reason is twofold. One is they typically have a very low income and they have no, no arrangement or no relationship already with a financial institution, so they have no credit history. And secondly, that the banks that serve in those countries, those are commercial organizations and they have shareholders that they have to resp be responsive to. And it's very difficult to make money out of people that have no money, right? It's a bit of a conundrum. However, with CBCs, we can fix that. CBCs are very low cost and can allow financial services to be provided on a much, much lower cost basis than you do today. So that will enable people to have you know, simple payment opportunities. It will allow people to build up some credit history and have the ability to let borrow some money so they can grow their business. On and on about this, but I see that I'm up with my 60 seconds, so let's call it a day. All right, so there you go. Quick 60 seconds rant about uh, how beneficial CBDCs can be for the upcoming uh, transition. And of course, they highlight all the problems created by the current banking structure. So I thought I would just come together, uh, come and just share this. Came across this headline as well as that clip there. I had to share my two cents on it just because um, I'm really going to be combating and trying to rebuttal a lot of the uh, arguing points this upcoming year in reference to the whole CBDC push because there's no way around it. They're working on it. It's already done. And it's unfortunate that, you know, the current cryptocurrency sector, i.e. Ripple, is uh, seems to be leading the way. So here's a headline from uh, Cryptopolitan. It says James Wallace praises CBDCs for financial inclusion. So that word inclusion, we're going to hear a lot more of that. But who is that guy? The vice president of Ripple. And so uh, basically Ripple is for the most part leading the charge, as I mentioned. So I'll thumb through some things here to caught my attention and go from there. But it says specializing in central bank engagements and central bank digital currencies recently highlighted in the transformative potentials of CBDCs enhancing global financial inclusion. So ultimately, Ripple is at the forefront, it seems, uh, helping uh, central banks come up with their CBDC. So as of now, about 20 or so central banks they're working with right here. So it says Ripple, under Wallace's guidance, has been actively engaging with, with over 20 central banks worldwide on various CBDC initiatives. The company has positioned itself as a technology partner in these projects, notably in the second phase of Georgia's Digital Larry Project. It says, furthermore, Ripple's collaborations extend to countries like Bhutan, Palau, Montenegro, Colombia, Hong Kong, reflecting its commitment to fostering CBC development across different regions. And then it goes on and on and on, just give it, talk about more of the same. So as I mentioned before, we would not be here if it wasn't for the current mess that the central banks and governments has put us in as of right now. So I always want to go back to The Economist cover from 1988, where we were told well in advance that heading into this decade to get ready for a world currency. And of course, we know we're near a world currency, but as a result of the current financial structure going through shifts, i.e. with currencies being destroyed, they're definitely using technology for themselves. We're going to hear a lot more buzzwords such as inclusion, diversity, equity, you name it, heading into 2024. So I thought I would just log in real quick, share with you what's happening in the mainstream news and how as we move closer into the new year, you're going to be hearing all types of hype about CBDCs and the biggest ploy is to try to sell it to those who are monetarily uninformed in hopes of getting buy-in from the public. And of course, as a result of the deterioration of our economy globally, it's gonna be a lot easier to sell it because by that time, people will have been primed to think that a viable solution would be a CBDC. So an emergency situation, if something like a CBDC is rolled out officially, it won't be nothing new. Therefore, even the politicians in DC will be more on board with perhaps changing the Federal Reserve Charter as well as their mandates and the UCC code and rewriting it so that they can include the language of something in reference to a digital representation of the USD outside of what we already have, which is predominantly digital. Also transferring power back into the hands of a much smaller few. But anyway, thought I would just share this real quick. Curious to hear your thoughts. Want to remind you to be on the lookout for words such as inclusion. If you see it, I would encourage you to comment on it, share it in your social medias and give your spin on that so people are not solely believing the hype. But anyway, thought I would just check in. Leave your comments down below. Catch you guys later.